changes to the agenda and public comments. And uh, we'll start with. Oh, we do have one addition. Oh, we got one addition? Yeah, um, Stephen McDonald probation letter. Okay. Um, Okay, we're in the policy fix. I'd just like to say, if you folks who um, plan on speaking, if you could step up. Yeah, I'll get you come up here to remind them that if you record and other people can hear you. Oh, there it is. You're number three. Why don't you come on up and introduce yourself and we'll start with three? Oh, yeah, come on. Bring a chair. Thank yourself at home. <laughs> we don't fight. <laughs> but you told that a lot, right? Yeah, but another board in there. <laughs> All right. So I'm Allie Jetkins, your town ACO. I'm Dean Locke. I'm uh, ACO from over in Johnson. So our current issue, uh, have you guys read the email yep. from the council? Okay. So have you, have you rolling? Okay. okay, so that's our issue. Right. We have no place to bring dogs as of September 23rd, but technically it kind of starts when they sent the letter because there's yeah, restrictions right. in the right. the letter that right. you know we just we can't do. Yeah. So it puts us in a bind. Um, because we well collectively, Dean's yeah. called people, I've called people, you know, that can you foster a dog for a short amount of time? Like if we pick it up, you know, this, that. Nobody's willing to do that. Um We've done uh, uh, on our end, uh, called, uh, posted a front porch forum post, uh, trying to get anybody that would be interested to respond to me, uh, you know, in our area, like, you know, the same thing, fostering a dog, temporary housing, uh, anything like that. Uh, today, I started calling uh, uh, daycare, dog daycare places. I started calling uh, like other breeders and other places that already keep dogs. Um, and uh, just ran into dead ends of yeah. no, no, not set up for that. Right. Um, right. And so, I don't know what the dogs you bring in have. Well, and that's, you know, that's kind of where you kind of got into uh, the situation a little bit. The kennel changed hands uh, of the original owner that had been the owner and the operator for 40 years. Yeah. And then it got into new hands. They want to take it. To a different direction. Uh, Jeff always ran it the way Jeff ran it, and uh, but they want to they want to take it into a different direction. They want to make sure that any animal they bring in isn't going to um, bring anything that's going to affect their borders. Bring anything that's going to affect their business on um, the path that they want to take it. Yeah. So uh, us Johnson, you guys, and Cambridge and Jeffersonville are all do not have any kind of system in place. What's um, Morristown have? Yeah. They don't have anything in place either. Oh, that's great. <laughs> they, okay. they they have. Yeah. Um, Dean Mercer is ACO for Wolka. He, I don't know about their select board situation. I haven't heard from him. He hasn't got back to me. But last I heard from him was that he was going to talk to his town about, you know, maybe putting up a, a small building on one of his properties or town property right. where you could pull dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, you know, we don't know how long that would take. And it could be just for their town. Sure. Um, we'll 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 get. Get. Uh, Hardwick is not obviously part of Lomo County, but they use the kennels as well for years. Right. 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 Their ACO is just housing them in a spot on his property, um, which works for him. Great. Awesome. Yeah, right. Uh, but with the Stowe, Stowe has a small building. Um, Andy Glover actually found that out for me and I can pull it up for you if you want to see it, but they have a small building that they use. It can house like three dogs, pretty much think of like shed style. Um, it is heated. I don't know if it's cool for summer months. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but that's what they use. Um, they don't want anything to do with any other plants. Um, <clears throat> Cambridge, like Dean was saying, they don't have anything. Eden doesn't have an ACO, so we don't know about their situation. They don't pick up dogs. No. Right. And neither does Waterville or Belvedere. So, you know, we're 
Yeah. Several on the Eden line. <laughs> Eden line. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll call it that. Come on. <laughs> Come on, high parts. <laughs> how, how many a year do you, you know, what are we sort of talking about for buying these dogs? Which I'm sure it's not a set number, and is it? That's and, where it gets really variable. I mean, uh, I told my collect board, you know, there's some months where it might be just one dog. I've had I've had several uh, several months in, out of the year that I've picked up two or three in a month. Um, the issue is the picking up the dog and then the process once you have the dog. Okay. And also, also, it also depends on why you picked up the dog. You could hold the dog for 10 days if it's an animal bite incident. Okay. And you're doing a, you're, you're going to hold the animal, seclude them for 10 days and watch for rabies. But that's another situation. The, the situation that just to be aware of is when, once we take in a dog, um, then it's processing to the next steps and the next steps. And right now, the next steps, uh, like NCAL and Justice for Dogs, has been Johnson's way of, of, of yep. getting the dogs back into uh, a community of being able to adopt them out. Uh, NCAL is very, very, very strict on their uh, assessments. And if the dog is not more than perfect, and not easy for them to deal with in their kennels and not going to be a easy thing for them to transition to adoption, um, okay. they will refuse the dog. Um, Justice for Dogs has done really well if they have space. And what normally happens is they're like the second line where NCAL says no, Justice for okay. Dogs may or may not, depending on if, you know, what, what they want to hear. NCAL, what was NCAL's assessment? Um, and then once you get past those two, at least in our area, then you're then you're calling special interest groups. You're calling you're calling special breeder based you know adoption you know programs. You know like for for German shepherds or for pit bulls or you know you're you're going outside the box uh, when it comes to creativity of like trying to now place this dog. Um, I mean 50-50, I think uh, pretty much. Um, I find the owner, you know, uh, about half or almost okay. sixty percent of the time, there's an owner, and I find it, and then the, reunite them with the owner, and that's within a couple of days. Um, but then you have the outliers where then there is no owner, or it's a drop off, or it's a or it's an abandonment issue, um, and uh, so that becomes then the town's responsibility and property, and uh, and it can lead to especially right now I I feel and I'm, we had a conversation earlier the system itself is very broken and it's over it's there's a lot of animals in the system right now in the state of Vermont and and a lot of other places but in the state of Vermont we've had a pretty big upswing and talking to other ACOs we're feeling it's going to keep going um, as soon as kids back back to school Kids went off to college, everything else. We saw an uptick during those couple of months. You know, a lot of people went out and got animals during COVID. And they shouldn't have. Right. Yeah. You know, and then it's, you know, coming back. Yeah. So, it, so how, it, how many of the, how many, because ultimately you just reach a point, do you end up having to have the dog destroy them? Right. And, and are those, which of course nobody, you know, I was, oh, so well. You know, but how are a dog that's really hard to place? You might have a dog that's that's hard to place because it's fairly unstable. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I understand, you know, dogs that have uh, behavior problems, uh, specifically like, uh, you know, bite, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, be around another animal or another yeah, yeah. cat. Right. Or another cat. Right. So okay. behavioral euthanasia, definitely, you know, I, I'm for it in specific situations. Yeah. But... As far as just euthanizing because you yeah. can't find a spot, a lot of vets around here won't do that if the animal's healthy. Right? So, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we have an obligation to, you know. Yeah. We're not official, but we're pretty darn close to a no kill, no kill yeah. state. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking. There are, there are circumstances. Right. Just, there are. Yeah. But I've talked to the, our local vet, and um, no vet yeah. there will touch a healthy animal. Right. 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 So how many nights would you say that you know you had dogs at the kennel like per, per year? Per year? Uh, would, oh, can you put a number on it? 
you know, like maybe 50 nights a year or? Um, gosh, I would, uh, the only problem is I had a couple of long haulers um, that didn't get placed. Um, Skip the long haulers. Uh, yeah, just kind of well, um, I would say amount of nights. Uh, I'd say probably 80 to 100. Okay. Well, maybe even a little more. Um, it, again, it's all that scenario. Yeah, so, and how many, okay. so talking with Ron and what the uh, the average was, yeah. I think Ron said it was about 4, 30, 40 yeah. nights. Does that there, include there the long hauls? I know we had yeah, quite a few long hauls. Yeah, we, we've had really good luck with the adopt out. Yeah. So in Hyde Park, we had these uh, for a while we were getting these drop off we come drop off yeah drops where people from Burlington or wherever find an isolated corner a lot of times it's like 100 c and 100 mm -hmm. so people can go yeah. for whatever reason yeah. but yeah. there was a little short list of local adopters yeah so before going to the re resource yeah. which a lot of time are national type organizations we had this little in-between step after Justice was uh, unable to take the dog. Number three was the local adoption list for families that had either lost a dog or put ask you to have a dog. I'll take any kind of dog, you know. And then we'd get into the national, and then we get into the, the tax payers issue, which is nobody wants the dog. Maintain the dog, give it medical care, give it shots, take out the quills, you know, all those things that happen to some animals and decide on euthanizing or whatever because you just can't you know, can't find them the other way. We haven't had to go there. No. Right. So right. That's, uh, on the long list, we've ended up not the, having those long haul. The groups, I periodically see them and I'm, I'm sure you've been in touch with them, you know, like in, um, I tend to think of coming out of Chittenden County that are, you know, going south and bringing right. dogs up to be adopted. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you must connect with them and they, oh. I would, uh, yeah, all of them. And if you start going anywhere close to Chittenden County, they will tell you to go across the pond and take them to go to New York. <laughs> Who's going to drive them? Are you? Are you? <laughs> I don't have time. I'll, I'll, do I'll let you know we're in a scenario right now where I have an ACO that's been housing a dog since the 24th of July because of this issue with the kennel and how strict they got. And after NCAL wouldn't take the dog, uh, the kennel just told, told us, come and pick up the dog. And they'd be like, well, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. They just insisted that's what we were supposed to do. So we did. And now, unfortunately, that uh, that ACO has uh, made up a temporary housing for this dog. She has dogs, but not something she signed up to do. And she's trying to struggle to find anybody to adopt this dog. But uh, it's there's, there's those times where it's going to be like one day. Yeah. And you found the person and, you know, and they're back home and everything's right. great. And then there's going to be the scenarios where, you know, 10 days for a bite uh, for rabies. Uh, and then there's other times where it's probably going to be that many days to hopefully try and transition them out. Right. And sometimes that's going to overlap with another dog. And so it becomes that kind of scenario. But... So and I know you guys all met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you all, as the people who are on the ground having to deal with it, what do you see as the, we, we're sort of facing immediate crisis, yeah. but, then, but then how rapidly can we get to a you solution? Know, a solution? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing is, is that Justice for Dogs housed their dogs at Kells. So, um, so there. So we can't even pass on a dog that's adoptable yeah. to just interesting because they, they would. They've got the same trouble. Well, right. is that maybe a group that that the towns could work with to build a facility that dealt with this? That is something that we touched lightly, but they didn't seem to show much interest. I think it was a staffing concern. Yeah, yeah. If you get so many dogs in their own operation, right? You're, yeah. The staffing of the strays is maybe even more time consuming for processing. They right. have to have that answered. They right. go together. So space is one issue. Staffing is the second part. Right. Um, the way Stowe was operating seemed to be okay. They had yeah, sort of a dedicated yeah. person to do the twice day visits. Yeah. The time passed. So but Andy, you still have to pay that person and find the person and yeah. Andy Glover from Marshall PD 
he said that the stow has a person that goes there and tends to the dogs when they have one placed in the building. In the, building. the person is paid as needed. So, you know, if they get one, they just call them, hey, there's a dog in there. Right. Go take care of it. Yeah. yeah. Presentation that I gave my select board last night was the, the need for answer today right. or by this weekend and then an answer for later on. Uh, we love the idea of, you know, of collaborating because yeah. all of us are in the same boat and trying to come up with a collective answer to the situation. Uh, whether it be, you know, we all try and figure out a building somewhere where everybody can utilize it and we figure out the financial part of how that's going to work with all the towns. Um, you know, the the perfect thing would be somebody stepping up and saying, yeah, I'll build that and, you know, and, and whatnot. But so far we haven't heard that miracle person, but that miracle person is is down the road. So right now we got to figure out what are right. we going to do this weekend when you get a call and there's a dog uh, at large. Which is funny because after our last meeting, Dean Mercer had one that was surrendered um, and he also went and picked one up. Somebody called me to pick one up. I'm like, I, I, I can't help you. I, I can yeah. help you, you know, by posting online. I can do that for you, but I can't, you know, I can't do anything else. I don't have the capacity. So what do you do? Yeah, because pretty soon if we don't do something, there's going to be nothing for ACOs to do, and we're just going to have dogs running around wreaking havoc, especially the mean ones. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I had offered uh, some ideas to Ron when the the email or the letter came from the kennels of, you know, what does Hyde Park have for available land? that the town owns that we can put a building on. Right. And then me being a kennel owner, no, I cannot take any, I don't have the capacity to do that. Because <laughs> my policies and procedures would be pretty much the same as the kennel, which I do understand where they're coming from. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, um, but I, get it. Yeah. I look at things all the time, like how can I improve my business and prefab buildings, <laughs> which are pre-made, ready to go, um, which I have examples on my phone I can show you with costs. Um, and you can pick whether it houses three dogs or 16. I wonder if we could convince Casella to do a facility there. It's a problem. You know, because the, the thing is, and then the next cost that the town's put in, because they've got staff there all day. Yeah. So a, a, a business that isn't, you know, they aren't, they aren't dealing with animals, but just think right. of it as an addition. Right. If we could get them to, when the towns to chip in right. and build a decent facility with cement floors and the run, you know, just do it properly. Right. They're going to do it. Right. You know, um, and and talk with them about, because that, that's the sort of place, you know, connected to something that already exists that has some people there some of the time. Right. In, instead of, you know, being in the middle of no place and somebody's got to drive out there and it's like, no, here's Casella where you got somebody. And, and again, for the off hours, the check away, and again, you can sort all that stuff yeah. off. But I yeah. think you want to start where there's that kind of a, and, and of course, Jeff's used to be the dumb. Right. Right. <laughs> yep. You know, it's, yep. you know, yeah. in the boarding facility, it's, you know. Right. Which I think collectively with all the ACOs that we had talked to last week, we kind of all assumed responsibility for any dog we put in said building you know yeah, like we yeah, go yeah, take right. care it's not of those dogs. Dogs. yeah that's right yeah. they come up with a, yeah. they come up with a whole set of procedures right. and costs and everything else yeah and, be, and, and i think the towns are going to have to deal with the reality that it's going to start costing us some money not just once you build it but right. it's start costing us some money it's like many things you just there are not the volunteers that there used to be. Right. No. Okay. There are at least as many problems as there used to be. No. You, you know, charge if somebody loses their dog is there any fee? You you charge them to kind of, we used to charge I think it was I think it was forty five dollars uh, was the fee to come and pick up their dog from the kennel and then they had to pay the daily kennel price and then the kennel would reimburse the town x uh x amount of money from that um so yeah the people had to pay so if 
that was that's another offset is is you know that will be something that's coming in yeah. that will offset things a little bit it's if, not if, if we could get somebody like Casella to be willing to work with us with the with the really basically the county you know yeah. i bet if we had a decent facility so right it suddenly get interesting right <laughs> after we built it in paper exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know but then i bet also and then talking to the vets because they know it's a problem and they don't, right. they don't, but I totally understand why they can't take dogs in, but talking right. with them about, you know, how they can help solve this and what can they contribute, you know, which can, you know, who knows, could be a variety of things, right? you know, but it seems we just need to, I feel, I feel like terrible urge coming on to get involved in this problem. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's a big happening. problem. <laughs> well, well, it is, you know, and, and it's not the dog's fault. No. no. <laughs> you know, it's always, it's not the dog's fault. Right. And if we, you know, don't you guys want to get involved? Well? I don't know. So this this is my weakest subject. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> why you guys were <laughs> physical. I was starting to <laughs> talking about, well, I'm really proud of it. I said, no. So my brain has been going, work. That's it. You want to do Jeff used to be the dump. Talking with Casella and and giving a voice to the voiceless. They're, they're good. Keep it going. You know, Casella's a good community partner. How many cats do you guys ever pick up? Cats? Mm -hmm. uh, cats are not in our repertoire. We are I don't dogs. Pick up cats. Yeah. Should we now? Pick up cats? Because I'm telling you, once you start something like this, guess what? It's going to go down. Cats. I, you know, realistically, in the future, you guys should think about a town pound or a county pound. Because, well, well, that's, I think, sort of what that would turn into. Yeah. You know, because NPAL is not going to be able to support it all. <laughs> so, well, and again, and there's, there's, I understand, and they're so picky. And yeah. So, I mean, I, I, didn't adopt from NCAP right. because they were so picky. Yes. That, you know, I could adopt a child from another country, but I Easy. couldn't get a yes. dog from NCAP. Yes. <laughs> this isn't working for me. <laughs> I mean, and honestly, NCAL is kind of going through it right now because they don't even have someone to evaluate the dogs. They're just they're trained, trained about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. They're using their staff. They're just, you know, pulling someone in. So, I mean, do we really know if that dog could pass? We don't know. I mean, if the dog, if I pulled it off the street and I brought it right there and that dog is stress rates in the max, of course it's going to fail. <laughs> you know, if you're slapping things against my face, I am going to bite you. I do not blame the dog. They, you know? They, 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 you know? they do not. They have that second building, right? right? Yeah. I don't know what they use it for. Well, I know, they, but that's also when I mean, someone else mentioned that, but you're right in the village. Yeah. yeah. And you know, ideally, you want to get these dogs out of town. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. if they're barking and it's like, no, yeah. you don't want to do this in the village. Right. Just a bad plan. Right. So, <laughs> circling back, um, sure, anybody I, have any ideas on that, that what, to do, to the problem. what to do short term? There is people out there that are on fixed incomes. Right. They don't have animals. Are they going to want to put money into this as a town? I mean, I'm just throwing that. Uh, oh, yeah. Table. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, there was some talk about there could be some grant money or something. Well, in terms of building, I, I, yeah, we come up with a riot and sort of just, you can do a lot of there. Of that. More work. Than, yeah. There is yeah. But the longer term, however, but that's where you take. You know, you increase your dog licenses, right. uh, you know, the yeah. sort of whatever. And and people who don't have dogs may, but it's also, um, if a dog comes tearing through their yard and is scaring their kids and is doing whatever, they want a response. Yeah. You know, like people people complain about paying for something until they need it. Right. And then they expect you to be there immediately. And, oh, absolutely. And everything. So, like, I'm not... I'm not gonna worry about that part right now. It's like, okay, what do we do with the dogs? Yeah. Um, so what did anybody in Johnson? Yeah, didn't Mark Woodward come up with something? No. Come on. No, he asked me if we, we had chip readers, and I said, yep, we've had them for like over six months. And he was like, oh, oh, then I was out about it. <laughs> um, uh, they, you know, I I get their direction. You know, they were they were like they were very That's hesitant it. on the whole like. Putting a kennel somewhere on town property, and then the ACO has to go over and take care of the dog and sanitation and food and all that. And I I get that, but at the same time, though, 
okay, so what's the alternative? And the, well, the, the only alternative that I think of is somebody's got to step up and until that person steps up in the community that's willing to do it, at least the ACOs know what they're doing, have, you know, work with dogs, how it can, and at least manage a dog properly. Right. And yeah. have definitely got to get this out there, advertise this and tell them we're having a problem and Done. Get, it, get it out there. You We've put it on front porch forum. I put it on social media and we did this shortly after we got the letter yeah. and nothing crickets. When did you have the letter? Oh, sugar. Uh, when did I pay my tax bill? That's when Chris gave it to me. So it was right before it was due. So it was like the 30th. Yeah, it was at the end of, yeah. end of last month. Yeah. yeah. And he gave timeline of three weeks. And, and it was like, but as soon as I got that right. letter, it was like, okay, well, then we're all, we're all set. Yeah. We're going to find something. And then we've been mobilizing. And well, I think what it's going to take is us getting together with other slug boards and trying to see where they are. Yeah, and that's that's going to, that's going to be a lot of time that goes by that these guys are confronted with where they have dogs and what do they do. Right. Personally, I think it'd be better if we as a town made the decision, got the building rolling, and then we could collectively do something. Hey, there's Keith. Well, we could do something with the towns, the surrounding towns together. But for a solution now, we need something. Okay, Chastity, what's the answer? Unmute yourself and tell us what the answer is. What are they doing with the Lamoille Tunnel space? You know, they're using it for their business. Oh, okay. And I can, you know, as a kennel owner myself, I can't object to what they're doing. I understand it. They're wanting to take it. Uh, Bummer. I was like, if we could use utilize the space for the short term, that would be, you know. Yeah, no, that's the whole problem. We can no longer use yeah. the space. But if we were made, like, if we were in charge of the space, I guess is what and I would mean. Space. That's a private property, right? It's private. Ah, uh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, well, it's not a, it's not a, it's not publicly owned. It's always been private. Oh. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. My yeah, dog went there know, once. Be a I can yeah. vouch. I can, I can vouch for all those fees. <laughs> <laughs> My dog spent a few days there once. Um, <sighs> I don't even know right now anybody that has fenced in area that would be. Well, and then the trick is. Winter's coming. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. But even just for as, as we I get see. something, I mean, even for a couple of weeks, I don't even know anybody I, that has a good. Myself, I'm going to sleep on this. <laughs> you know, that, that has. I just a, can't make a decision now. Yeah. Has a, has a yeah. kind of space. Yeah. So, what are we going to do? We can just put a big step up here. Yeah, but we're obligated to the taxpayers to take care of these dogs. So, we kind of have an obligation to make some sort of decision. Am, am I correct in that statement? Well, we get, as I say, we've got that. We've got, we got to, there's the very pressing short term with, you know, the dogs that get picked up in the next week or so. Right. But, that's right. That's what I mean. But that to give us a little breathing space, I'll, um, I'll talk to Casella tomorrow. Um, and see who I can find up there to talk to about it to see if they have any interest in partnering up with the communities to to put a facility up there. Not, not going to cost me anything to talk to them. <laughs> Worst thing they'll say is, are you a crazy woman? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that more than once, so yeah, yeah big deal. Okay. You're, you're talking right over here. Yeah. Yeah. The thing with that, I like the idea of it, but you have to think about... <clears throat> How the dogs are going to react being in there when there's if there's loud noise yeah you know it could be more stressful for them which would could potentially put anybody you have going in there put them in danger of getting bit because they're stressed um the quiet area would be more beneficial but it has to be somewhere where they're you know not bothering people with barking because right they're gonna right. bark right they're gonna bark yeah so this it sounds like you almost need a couple of people that are involved willing to take on these dogs 
Oh, right. I don't know if the trainers can. So, no. so you find a couple people that can take a dog here and there. Right? Yeah, that's and, like the best situation is right. trying to find somebody that's willing to, you know, I, I've found some people in the, in the past, but, uh, you know, nobody's uh, nobody has said yes to this because this is this is a little different. Uh, this is yeah. yeah, this is long term. Sure, it could be gone tomorrow, or it yep. could be three or four weeks. Right, right. What's the longest? So, like what? Typically, our holding time at the kennels was ten days, and then they had to be shipped out. So wherever you put them, you've got to think of air condition in the building. Yeah, it has they, to be cool. They you got to be think of air, water. You got to be thinking of. Water, you're going right. to be thinking of heat and sanitation. Right. Sanitation right. and yeah, having everything. everything that you have proper to to clean this and to clean the kennels and everything else. Cool. Do I yeah. have an idea? What about a mobile kennel? So, say you have like a 20 or 30 foot trailer or something, and you have a building right in the middle of it, like five by five, whatever. Okay. Um, and then on both sides, you have an exit for this side, exit for this side. So, say you could put a dog on both sides have concrete down and fence it in or something so that way you can move it around connect it to water wherever you are so you can put out your place or somewhere and that way the dog can go out use the restroom outside you can just hose it off or whatever and yeah not a bad idea but am i going to get taxed on that if it's over 100 square feet if it's sitting on my not <laughs> <move it>. <laughs> <laughs> These are this is the building. I'll pass my phone around. You guys can just scroll through. So this is um start with the photo. That's the photo of one of the buildings. They're pre-made. You hook up heat, water, yeah, your sewer, and your AC, and you are Good to roll. It has indoor kennels and outdoor with a sliding door access so you can let the dogs out. If you scroll through the photos, it tells you the prices too, Susan. Okay. The other thing, switching back to the short term, uh, just let people know. I've looked at kennels uh, depending on what price you want to go and how you want to go with it. There's kennels that have casters on that you can roll around. There's kennels that are foldable that, that go against a concrete wall and and you can pull them out of the way. Average prices for most kennels is running about a thousand to you know for super fancy, quick, clean, easy, hygienic ones, about seventeen to two grand. And almost all the ACOs I've talked to, if and we got to get something temporarily, we're probably going to have to get at least two, two, two. How many dogs do they usually? Have inside one, just one, just one, one dog per can. You can't put two yeah. in. Right. No, you don't know if they're going to get along. If they're going to fight. You're going to have a death match. You then, you gotta have a, <laughs> then you got to have. Then you got. We don't want to find out. <laughs> wall separation so the dogs can't interact. And yeah, stuff like that. And play. They don't have something like a like a trailer or something like that with several different breakdowns in them. It's going to be something that has water. That water is. The, Biggest necessity next to heat and cooling it has to have water. So one of them buildings are two thousand dollars. No, no, one of the kennels, like a kennel, a kennel, kennel. like that you could put you inside put of in. the town garage. How large are the kennels? What are the demands? Um, yeah. four by. Uh, I was looking at kennels that are four by eight. Uh, they go as small as four by four or four by six. Four by four is a pretty good size because yeah. it gives the dog 16 square feet and gives them enough, even a big dog, like yeah. Swiss mountain dogs, Bernie's mountain dogs. It gives them enough room to stand up, turn around. They can move side to side, plenty of room. If you took three standard size Labrador retrievers and you put them in a 16 square foot kennel, they could all still do the same thing. That's a pretty good size because it doesn't matter if it's a chihuahua or, you know, the biggest dog you can find. I know, lots of things to think about. <laughs> the good thing why I like these buildings, I will tell you, is because, like I said, they come already made. You yeah, can, you know, that, uh, that you and know, you and change it, them. It's, it's sort of the prices looking, fluctuate. It, that, well, they fluctuate, but right. if you go, if you do $50,000, right. 
you cannot you split get that it built. That. No, that's right. You split it between the communities. Right. That's not a lot of money. No, no, it's not. And like I said, the price fluctuates. Whether I mean, if you want a metal siding, right. that changes. If right. you want, if you just want clapboard, they can do that too. But then your price goes down, which is right. fine. Right. We're trying to save money here. But where do we have land? Right. Well, where do we have land, Ron? <laughs> well, the, the uh, water. basis, you know, it gets easier, I think, you know, yeah. so if you have emergency situations, so the select boards are responsible for quantifying that and making sure that it's kind of frees up some things. Right. So if you wanted to have a temporary roll off shelter type thing that maybe was even rented or leased from someplace that so doesn't involve the structure, but it's set up for what you need. Then you'd find that and just bring it to the, the back of the town office. You know, just there's water there, right. there's there's a plug. You know, you could right. do a very temporary, mm -hmm. very emergency two or three kennel place just to solve the immediate need. But at the same time, you reach out to Casella and other, or other places, partners, right? all the people that potentially are touch a dog during their day or like a dog during their day, and you just start coming together with all the select boards on a permanent solution. Right. But Hyde Park and Johnson just cooperating on the two towns to, to limit the amount of time it takes to reach that simple, quick solution. Right. So Allie and Dean working together to you know make sure it's workable for you guys. Cambridge can come over to you, know, yeah. you can allow that stuff. But I think there's two tracks that almost have to be on top of each other. Yeah, right. Yeah. But so keep in mind with with a mobile unit, you either have to walk these dogs. And sometimes you might not even be able to touch after they've been in there. They might, mm, you know, change their tune once right. they're in a cage. Yeah. So they have to be able to access outside. Uh, in an emergency situation. It's oh, I know. I understand the emergency. I'm saying like not, you went with a mobile unit yeah. long term type thing. Yeah. Yeah. They not, have to have a place where they can access outside. But yeah. Yeah. Even if you have a collar on some right. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Never mind walking. Right. Yeah. So I'm cross my time. fingers. I've, I've picked up. I've picked up. I got dogs out of a truck that was abandoned in the back woods because of a high-speed chase and they came out and were totally fine right. i've crossed my fingers i haven't had one bad haven't had one issue yet but well are, are there those portable things do they exist the portable kennels i was <laughs> thinking I was first i remember when you mentioned it so i don't know there's something you could back yeah, but, up but you or yeah, so there's been something that already just exists. Well, well that's, yeah. that's the ACO's job. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do anything that doesn't serve your needs, you know. Oh, so, oh, uh, I need a race. <laughs> yeah, that would, like, that would suit our needs. Do we empty out a little shed over there on an emergency basis? You know? <laughs> that's your job. But those are available all around. Yeah, you know, yeah. for five thousand dollars, you can have a temporary shed. With oh a, yeah, those tiny with yeah. divider. Yeah. Those yeah. Those yeah. yeah, which and then but we're looking at cold weather right now. Yeah, but we're trying to do short term. Don't 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 confuse the two because we got two going on here. We got to figure out the short term. What we, we do doing first, right? We do right. I mean, I I looking at those. I think long term there is definitely your solution. Oh yeah, you know totally. because. Because only fifty to sixty thousand dollars. However, if you get you know three right. communities chip in, yeah. well, it's not that bad. No, no, no. The no. yeah. yeah. community. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing to think of, just to let you know, is if we, as in all the towns, are now owning the kennel and doing and using our own kennel basically yeah. that means any money that we take in for for the boarding and for the fines and for the person right. that has to go pay to get their dog out that's going right back to the towns right. that's right. not right. getting going, we're, not we're not getting just a little chunk we're right. not going to get the right. whole thing yeah so it just that also yeah. adds up yeah 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 might cover a little bit of operation cost but at least it would be something well, we need to look at the, uh, I mean, the fees that Lamar was charging was right. over those set uh, 20 years ago. I mean, yeah, they were just yeah. Yeah. The fees that have been maybe at a, more at the current rate. We missed a lot of the kind of fears. Um, I mean, yeah. $10 a night is um, woefully inadequate. That's in my dollar, yeah. No, you didn't. No, I didn't have it. Um, 
Jeff served okay. us really well, though. She was oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. But I mean, I based dog care on uh, quality over less money. Yeah. It's kind of like hiring a carpenter. Okay, okay. Well, we haven't got, we haven't, we haven't helped you guys with the. No. Okay. It's is this mobile unit really a thing? Is there such no, a he just made it up. I'm sure it's a good idea. Kind of like these like office units. Yeah. Kind of thing, like that whole concept. Construction. Um, yeah. So you could yeah. in theory say like you have this, these doors, maybe put extra doors in, but you use that and then fence in the area outside, like a temporary fence. So it could be the gamble property perhaps or. Right. But what does something like that cost? Yeah. What do they say? They're rentals usually. You would rent the building. And then you got to pay for moving. So it doesn't really help you either. Because it's not like, you know, oh, Keith can hook onto it with the back of his truck and haul it down the road. You got to count it. What? More than you need to camp along your Johnson. Look it up. Let's go. <laughs> what, si tell, what size would you need? Oh, for a space temporary. temporary yes this is our imaginary mobile temporary oh imaginary mobile temporary it needs to at least house well it he needs size it's, it, it, jesus Christ. if you're just doing you just talk if you, we're just first. doing the town yeah you need spot at least for three that's exactly my magic number two so okay so let's so we 16 square foot foot, this again. okay so. 16 square feet per dog times three I'm six. <laughs> or do three and double it. Because <laughs> it's all those things that's crazy. There's other ACOs that aren't here. Well, I'm, I'm, I know, but yeah. you know, have another three. An AC and all of that, but you said sewer. Is that sewer? You have to have a sewer per yeah. state law, Ron. Was that Ron's fault? Yeah, it is. <laughs> he made me put one in my kennel. I feel like this is an awkward seating position. <laughs> no, I, I just like bust. I feel like it. But no, you have to have a sewer. So what is that? Water. Yeah, your temp or is that for a long term? You have to have a sewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The temp one, what we yeah. do there. Temp one, I think you get away with it, but I don't know if it violates anything. What's the sewer? Sewer, gray water. You're gray, you're race water when you're cleaning. <laughs> The cleaning. You're not you're not just hosing it out and letting it go on the ground. No, yeah, that ain't gonna finish. Bad plan. <laughs> yeah. And you gotta have a sink. Yeah, have a water source. You gotta be able and it has to have hot water. So you have to be able to wash everything. You can't well, wash it cold. They'll also just first <laughs> put a hole inside of the camper that already has kitchen heat. So right. right. I know. I like where you're going with it. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's not trying to buy enough the light, it's gonna be the issue. Well. And it's also if you do the cost of making that kind of investment right. that you're trying to do short term, we're better to well put it in the long term. Right. right. So right. it looks like the air conditioned trailer that they do construction sites, mm -hmm. you know, eight by twenty four, right. money hundred a month to rent those. Yeah. So you took it up to your utilities, park it, and then while you work on the bigger plan and get that yeah. bench season of. But then you'd also yeah. have to. Put in the kennels into that building. Yeah, so right. then you're purchasing those kennels and putting them into the building. And then you're going to ask the people that you're renting that from, hey, are you all right if we sell some dogs in there? I don't know what security deposit is, but. <laughs> well, not that. I just. <laughs> Sorry. Just... That's why people don't understand. I can tell you right now, this is No. Sounds like a real problem. I don't yeah, I okay. think we thought I've been stressed about this since I read that letter. Right. Okay. So those can yeah. send me a link. I will link. So okay. So they're right now, so I don't forget. Okay. You wanted uh, Senator Bartlett at Comcast. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, I got you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to forward that to my yeah my board. Um, my just board. just to find out, and then thinking because if it has everything, then again someplace. That already has it again. What yeah. the cell phone noise may be an issue. Um, that may be a minor issue compared to right. everything else we're looking at. Right, <laughs> right. Which no, I, I'm not. I, I know I'm going to sound like I'm boosting these kennels, but you can make these what you want them to be. You can add soundproof board, so you know you it, it deadens the noise from the dogs inside the building. Um, if if it was me and I was building another spot, I would buy one of these in a minute and put in one of those heating and AC units. Mm. 
on the wall because yeah. that's yeah. what I have, have that in mind right now. Yeah. Best thing I ever invested in cost me about 4,500 bucks. Yeah. Energy saving. It's yeah. great. Yeah. But I tell you in the winter, you need a second source to go with the heating because that will not keep up in Vermont's temps when it drops right. below 10 below. Right. Right. You're right. The good about 10 below. Yeah. 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 And the other aspect is if the building, like, Oof. oh, there it is. I know every ACO that I've talked to would be willing to staff temporarily until something, some kind of like, you know, I don't know, some kind of subcontractor person yeah, could right, be right. found. So you start to figure to, out the to, to, right? to, to actually, you know, be more of a one person taking care of the animals kind of situation. Well, uh, and if and if you have a nice facility it probably is much easier to get somebody including a lot of people that have said no at this point because you know they don't want to integrate their dogs and again i, I totally get that right. but they would be willing to say okay sure we'll, we'll help with the staff in doing a variety of things. right it's the it, you know it's the decent safe housing that you need to take uh -huh. right you don't care yeah and you know you also need to make sure that the person you put in there is well, capable and right. has the right it's going to take care of everything. Okay. Right. So the other option, because we do have this immediate need, it's easy to get off track on the long term. Right. So, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> the immediate need is from bare bones metal wire cage, which we yeah. have. We have multiple scattered around for those emergency mm -hmm. tomorrow. Outdoor, put a blanket on it, leave a spotlight on the backyard or something. Very rough. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, used office, mobile office, purchased would, would range from, you know, I don't know, this one's fifteen hundred, but say fifteen hundred to ten thousand, somewhere in there for the one time purchase, modified, destroyed to get through the winter though. If you're, you're, a big project is not gonna happen right. until next year at the right. earliest. So you really look for a long-term temporary, either in these mobile type, mobile home brought in, mm -hmm. totally homegrown modifications, right. oh, wow. or an existing building like the fire district, you know, shed up in North High Park or something that could be modified. That's large enough to put the dogs in the middle and not have them near the you know, outside of the neighborhood. But there's not that many existing buildings. I mean, people look for existing buildings, so it's not like right. they're a ton around that are just totally available. Yeah. We or they're in the village area or near houses or those kind yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Right. We came up complete blank on yeah. that. No building options in Johnson. Well, that's that's in a floodplain. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> easy now, easy. Um, hey, I grew but, up there. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but so if Matt was here, I'd say, Jay McDonald, do you have a big old trailer in the back that we could have put up on the back of the lawn by the cemetery for a temporary kennel? You know, right. that kind of thing, because they I'm sure construction companies have to use contemporary offices all the time that are heated in pools. Mm -hmm. They probably get rid of them every once in a while, but mm -hmm. yeah, most of them rent. Most of them rent. But you never know. Because they, they just throw it into their bid. Why would they for anyone yeah. that they own? Yeah. <laughs> not gonna make if you're looking for something like that that's used, then you you would buy it for the next 12 months while you work really hard trying to get another answer. Right. Well, cages that we have, I don't see those as being suitable. I mean, they're they're like a, a cage to transport a dog from where you pick it up to the kennel. You you wouldn't want or expect a dog to stay in that for any length of time. It's the dog is. I mean, they're just it'll fit the dog and that's it. The dog can't really move. So that's really. It has to be good. an option, though. Keith. It has to be an option. Yes. It has, it has to be the bare bones option. I think I know where he's going. You're not going to bring him in the house. You're not going to leave him in the car. You should leave right. him outside at least. I think he's he's saying that leave like. Winter makes that not an option. Right. Winter makes it not an option. But I think he's saying that those kind of type of fold up kennels, the metal fold up kennels. I'm sure y'all know what those are. That's they're not like 000. super secure. <laughs> My little dog can move across the whole house. That and you know, bigger dogs, it's easy for them to just destroy you and get right out. Yeah. So that's that's no, I think, yeah, I think, I think, I think what we should do is put a piece of the slide board in, into the paper and yeah. the front porch for them ourselves and see if we can reach out to somebody that has some ideas. I mean, you ideas, yeah. I mean, it's very specific needs 
It is. Now, yeah. that pe somebody might have that back building that for some reason they're yeah. comfortable with bringing the dog on, like in Wilkin or wherever. Your shed, a barn, or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that get into dogs. Right. So, you know, that would be something we could put in this week into the paper or write up something. And, you know, the town's, we, town's involvement in that case would probably be the liability concern for those people. We can answer that through the legal city and towns. We can answer the liability issue so that people don't automatically stop thinking about it. Right. You know, here's what we do for you if you allow private property use. We come up with an agreement, we cover liability, but yeah, we'd have to think about all the reasons why somebody would say no and answer those so if they're comfortable with it. And we'll pay you, you know, five hundred dollars a month. I, I, I've got an idea in the back of my head, but I can't say it on camera, but I want to talk to somebody. Yeah. There, there's that plus um you guys are obviously comfortable talking about it. I'll bet you we could get you talking with Roland LaJoy on, on uh, LVB. Huh. And I mean, and, and if you want to reach this community, yeah. LVB is the way to do it. So you yeah. retire now. And he yeah. had, it's, well, did he actually retire? Or he did. Yeah. Well, they were celebrating his 30 years. Well, he retired. Last weekend. The company, right. Yeah. Right. The but company, LVB, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. They're, they're, yeah. They're ready about The morning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Whoever so now, and that, that's when you want to reach this county, that's where they right. It's in the newspaper. People read it. They don't. Lots of people don't look at front punch reports, right? Or any of that sort of stuff. But you do something on that morning show and people will pay attention. Mm -hmm. And okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll give them a call tomorrow. The L W L B B. Yeah, maybe the select board should go talk with them. Well, but I don't have all you know. People call me ask great questions. I don't have. I'm I'm happy to come with you, but I don't I don't have the amount yeah. of information that you can get into. Here's why you need, and here's you know mm -hmm. here's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to go with you, and I think if you do it, then select board following it up is a you know it's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it's you want to get out there as many people because again, that's the there yeah. are lots of people we care about dogs we might have, and and if we if before you go and say here's what we're looking for short term, long term we're thinking about this sort of thing, and we're going to have somebody that would be willing to house something like this, and here's what you need. Yeah, you know because if the whole county starts talking about it, you can be amazed how. No, Marshall has a right? No, no, Marshall doesn't even have an ACO. Pretty much the police department's been handling dog calls and on a. Um, can't remember how Andy worded it, but if it if it was like a stray dog, you know, running around town, they would attempt, you know, in a drive by to try to get it, pick it up. Um, there's been cases, bite cases, where they've gone out obviously immediately and taken the dog. Um, but they their procedure was the same, bring it to the kennels. So they they're they're in the same boat. Yeah, we're all in the same boat. And if you think about it, if everybody's all in this very big boat now <laughs> that so also can, means yes. that 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 means there's a lot of resources in that exactly. boat. Right. and we just right. need to right. figure out how have, we all can okay. communicate and, and so, connect those together so you know having finished just finally this past Saturday one gigantic project that'll be done for three years um i'll 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 take on for trying to figure out how to get this organized and get yeah. some more so that we can you know I'll check in with Casella to see if and again if they yeah. and uh, and with LVB to see about getting you guys on there sure. um, because again that's where the that's where people are going to hear and may end up with four or five more people that have a situation where they can foster right. it's like I I don't have any sense there I don't have anything I can't you know, I, I can't take an unknown dog and. Yeah. If, if I had that, if, if there were a fence there, you could put it out there. Yeah. Now, for the, uh, let's say if we get one of those pre built uh, that you were at, um, Sean was, uh, it would still need the uh, kennels, the cages inside. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder um, if we could proceed to get two or three, probably three of those cages right away, right. Uh, find a place to put them. But we don't have the little carry the cage to you right. have a, an honest to God uh, cage that we can put them in and we can find a place um, somewhere in the interim. Uh, but at least we need the cages yeah. um, and not just a little carrier yeah, right. 
poodle carrier cage, we need an honest to God cage that yeah. a dog could be housed in, you know, unreasonably that you would put your dog into. Right. You know, and, and well, you have a small dog. No. Oh. Because you're, you, it's not like it's going to be a waste to purchase them. No. Right. Right. Well, I, yeah. I need. I need one now. She needs one now. We need one now, and then we need. We'll probably need them later. Johnson, get get a couple. We get a couple, then we at least got something. I will uh, take and, this after this meeting and take everything back to them and uh, and press. Okay. And that. what does a kennel cost? Yeah. Uh, something you, you would know would be a, a yeah business. I went on to uh, I've been researching several different uh, kennel yeah. types and kennel sites and it all depends you can you can go cheaper you know and get something for under a thousand dollars that will be suitable um, you can go for something that's you know, indoor outdoor and you know more <laughs> clean and friendly or something and then you're just upping in price so if you're if you're looking for something now with the right. ability to just have the dog in a building without, you know, we'll come in, take them out kind of thing. These are the solution to all the dogs. They're $249 each. They're, or sorry, I scrolled down. They're the 16 square foot kennels. And to be honest, they are what I use in my building. Okay. Supply. What would you do if you had a call tonight? If I had a call tonight, I had a call today. <laughs> what would you? What did you do? Uh, well, this this was uh, not specific to a dog. Someone called me about what they should do with mice and if I would come and get them. What? What would I do? I would. I, what can I do? I give up. I'm going to throw out. <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be like, sorry, can you can you house it for the yeah, night? Exactly. And I'll try to help you tomorrow. It's just not much I can do. Yeah. I can't bring it in my home. I can't bring it into my business building. It's, just, it's not feasible. Okay. And that's the other thing is, is getting like, you know, taxpayers are involved. And I think, you know, all the towns need to know. Yeah. what what we're up against and yeah. and that this will be a service that will not be happening until we have a solution right yeah and that will affect people I'll call here I'll like, at I it's like get together with Susan said that every uh, get we we'll get together with the towns we could all throw in 10 grand of beef right you know okay. we could have a pretty good yeah yeah that would take care of that kind space. of and you if know. you find a space that could happen for you, yes. oh, yeah. I know, but, <laughs> you know, but you can improve it as you go along. Yeah. What you need. I mean, well, there's I, well, there's other towns that are going to help us. Yeah. Well, I think I think finding the property, yeah, and that kind of looking at fifty or sixty thousand dollars in that yeah. case of a decent number of dogs. So that if again, if we start with our two communities doing it. Anybody else that wants to buy in, they're going to have to buy right. pay for part of the building as well. Right. You know, um, which they have a these building as a life, it, you know, really a lifetime thing. Probably. Well, and and to get this done sooner, not thinking yeah. of trying to figure out how to struggle through the winter, we right. better put together and yeah. to make this a priority and get yeah. it done. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. But short term, we need cages. Yeah. I mean, suitable cages right, right now, yeah. tomorrow. So, which they don't sell these in the building. They just buy a and bring them out. Where are you actually thinking about put? Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what we're trying to decide. Well, no, but I, we get, we he says we need them tomorrow. We, we get them tomorrow. tomorrow. We need somebody to put them. Yeah. We'll put them right in here. Is there room in like a town of the large, just like one bay or a section? That was brought up at our last at our during, ACO meeting. During decent weather when it's not winter emergency, the bays are lightly used. When it's when yeah, the emergency it's, time, it's a different act. You know, right. they're in and out all the time with all the equipment. So yeah. it's not yeah, but this is know. we're talking the no, couple so of weeks. Breaking it up right. into the two. So whatever you come up on the short term is gonna 
change in a right. couple months, you know. So it's like yeah. think, also short term thinking chunks of solution, right. chunks of solution, you know. Right. Well, and if the kennels um, that you get now can be utilized in another situation right. later, then well, you're also doing right. It. I think they're probably yeah, something close enough where the dog's gonna bark all night long and somebody's gonna not like that. Right. Cemetery people probably won't mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been think I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about that, but I haven't said it yet. Well, <laughs> Wait, no, man, that, the whole area around here is pretty desolate. You know, you go out to the backyard though, up the hill there are houses up behind the sand pit area. Right. So it'd have to be more towards the school property than the yeah. But that's where you got the yeah. That's why I haven't said nothing because I'm still thinking about that. Yeah, I'm still thinking like of trying to find people that you know you, you reach out to places, but I, mean, I think it's gonna be easier to find volunteers to help with the building than it is to house the dogs. Yeah, oh, it's gonna so be easier to find volunteers absolutely too. Help absolutely. Yeah, that's why with the building, like going sure. in and feeding the dogs, letting them out, that kind of thing. Okay, First, so you get there. Yeah. <laughs> you can get yeah. there. when you get there, right? Yeah. Would you rent a like a wedding tent type structure for the fall? Just you know, to get through the whole fall. Well, then Keith would answer on that because he's more of like health of you know, help. Well, yeah, those you go month to month until somebody coughs up the big building. Right. So but then right. you're looking at temps. They have yeah, certain so, temps. You have to keep them, you know. I don't want to say it. Like a you, you need to have one. Shut the camera. Salt water. You yeah. have to have all those things. things. Yeah. You need to you follow. Know, you've got a space up there. Field days. Somebody reach out. Somebody up there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm no, just. Yeah. I don't want to say that too loud, but. No. Well, I agree. Yeah. 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 It's an idea. Yeah, it's not utilized all the time. That's right. There is neighbors across the world, though. Right. There is neighbor out back. Well, there, there, there are always some neighbors every place. Yeah. Right. But, but, but we got to think of access to. But there's right. there's, there's, the there's a building you could put a cage. Right. Underneath, which would be helpful. Uh, the, the lean to there. Well, yeah. again, just right thinking of this as a short term solution. Right. If we get that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. even yeah. the barn is there. You know, Again, right. we're we're into September, right. and right. weather is going to get real cold. It looks like they'll start building the vehicles. All that stuff. Yeah. Somebody can just do something we're like that to, this year. We're just trying to come up with a two week solution. Yeah. 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 We're not even getting into October. Yeah. yeah. We're just yeah. trying yeah. to struggle. Yeah. That's right. Or, yeah. <laughs> um. So I think probably we need to go, to go ahead and author, authorize getting some cages because they're going to be needed whatever and they're like they're about two hundred and thirty bucks each. So if you found a volunteer, would you just give them a cage to make to house them or temporary? Right. I think we have to. Yeah, yeah, and that might that could potentially help the volunteers. Right, and these are really easy. You can tear them apart in five minutes. They are sturdy, very yes. I love it's them. Nice. I can have... they be utilized on concrete and outside? Yes, they can. Concrete, yeah, uh, outside as long as it's flat ground, or if you had a way to anchor it down, anchor them, which is not hard to do. But they can also be manipulated so you can make them bigger or smaller as you see fit. So that's a good thing. They're not useless cows. Right. Okay. Okay. It's been an hour on it. Yeah, we have. Now we gotta okay. think about it. So well. <clears throat> But we are, I think we also need to go ahead and, and buy some chemicals because there isn't any doubt. She said there. three. Well, I'll make a motion. We buy three of them. Okay. Where's that going? Jassy. Yeah, Jassy. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. <laughs> yes, I agree. Okay. okay. I'll second it if I need I'll to. Of, uh, having Allie ordered the three chemicals from Tractor Supply, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now you think yes, you could get Johnson to do the same thing for till we? I'm gonna take it to them and, and okay. say right. this is what yeah. you guys have done and. Right. Here, here's what we're doing here. short term. Yep. I'll I'll tomorrow. Um, I'll contact LVB and see about getting a getting morning time ASAP to talk about a problem that the county is facing that most people are unaware of and you know. And, and you know, what's happening. get somebody like Jason Luno 
Mm -hmm. to go up to the radio station. And I think he would. I think he would too. He's a busy man. Yeah. I was going to say, just add that to his plate. I don't know. No, but the job's a I, think, I think he would help yeah. in a Be big a way to, you know, mm -hmm. just tell him what Morrison's doing. They have to take it to Stowe and, yeah. you know, it is a problem. Yeah, that's right. Well, and again, you can just start here it is and that, and you can, you know, about how you, you know, you all met. We know the other towns are facing it. Everybody's in the same sort of quandary. Mm -hmm. We've got to and break it into here's the short term, what we need. We're getting kennels so that if you know somebody has a has a garage or a house or a pair or something that they yeah. could short term house, you know that would be terrific. And we're looking at a long term solution of building a you know a, a decent kennel this fall yeah. someplace. Yeah, you know maybe you can and, and reach out to one of the board members down there. They might go to the radio station too. Uh -huh. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll check with Casella. Um, really, we can talk after about the other one, but you know, just checking to see if they're saying for the for the short term yeah. interest of being you know being able to, to do that. And I'm sure in some ways, the closer it is, the better. They go. I think it's not up happy. there. Would not they would try to help us somewhat for the winter? Yeah. Oh well, you're right. Right. And even the short term to be able to figure out. More time. If I think you can fire out of the way for anybody. But you can get no, talking about the field that you pay pounds, you don't pay any tax. Mm -hmm. It's really not that much fire out of the way. Yes, I don't know what they've done. I'm trying to get out of this. I'd have to talk to Scott on that. Okay. Okay. We're good. Thank you, guys. Short term. Short term. Thank you. We got it. And then looking at and, and again starting to get people talking long term and see what we can do. Yeah. yeah. Be helpful. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for everything you do. Well, well I'm doing right, this. Right thank now, this we're guy. not doing a whole lot. We do have a bit of tractors. I Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely doing this next. Let's do a couple of quickies here. We can do the number yeah. four should be quick, right? Yeah, I think uh officially make a motion to have a late file since that's gonna be about three percent. Right. <clears throat> Which apparently we weren't we weren't formal enough at the last meeting to do it. <laughs> So the oh wait no, love those pictures. Okay, see you're supposed to write in the motion for us. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Please about the come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we right. need a uh, we need a uh, motion that uh, Destin is absolutely was going to create for us that we um, that uh, when people uh, this is number four. With uh, people file late homestead declarations, that um, there's a three percent, mm -hmm. yeah, that we charge them three percent. We we all agreed on this last term, but we didn't. It wasn't a formal motion, so we have to make a formal motion. Yeah, to adopt the policy. You know, adopt the policy with the three percent, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. So moved. Second. 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 I think I wasn't here last time, but I think it's a good idea. Yeah, what we're doing. Yeah, what we're doing. Okay, you got it. Yeah, Chastity, you can put your hand up if you're not, but you're not muted. You're okay. No, I'm good. Okay. Sorry. I was, Ooh. someone was outside the window. <laughs> <laughs> this is What's just on? the policy where uh, yep. late filers do. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Uh, we can do the quick update. So we're getting to get a little cookies out of the way here. Centerville and Brook Road culvert replacement. Woo, that's what that, that says. Like, that's impressive. We went down the other night and looked at it. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that certainly looks a lot different than it did before. We, we are, we are, we're going to be ready for floods. <laughs> yeah. We are compacting and backfilling Centerville. Uh, next week, the pipe comes for Brook. He's going as fast as he can. Yeah. So when do they are they guesstimating at Centerville to be done? I don't think they've given me a date yet. I think they wanted to get 
the next couple days done because okay, that's right. when they really will set the pipe. Okay. When the temporary pipe comes out, I think they'll give us a really good okay. date. But mm -hmm. now before then, it's just too iffy. Too, too many you know, things. Three into the rain tomorrow, and they have to start over. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't want to. We ain't get three. No, no. I'm just. <laughs> He's he doesn't want to give anybody a date because there's too many variables. Right, so they're, yeah. not, they're not that far along yeah. to to be confident right. yet. So we don't want to say that because we're pretty right. confident. Right. Okay, the, the pipe set or Centerville? Okay. Centerville set. No, they're back filling. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna meet up with a guy there. That Kevin? Chassis back. Chassis. Oh. That's all she's okay. Chassis. I just shut the door. Sorry. <laughs> my, dad's, my dad's getting rowdy downstairs. <laughs> we always knew he was a wild man. <laughs> okay. A little quick. We know that's not that's not quick. We just have to find a solution. Uh winter salt. Uh we got two quotes. Uh we have compass and cargo. And Mark said he had no preference. Cargill is four dollars sixty four cents per ton cheaper. That's that's Barrett's. Barrett's is the hauler. Cargill's the supplier. Four dollars a ton cheaper. Wait, I'm looking to go in the Cargill. I'll second it. Yeah. Got that, Chad? Yep. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Here's the couple. Yeah. Now we get into some interesting stuff. Okay. Now we go back up to two. Did you guys? That's a separate email, not part of the package. Okay. But we can make copies if you want to get into the. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know what approach you wanted to take. So. Oh yeah, no, I think you guys, everybody, got it originally. You want some paper card? I do better with that. I can figure out where. Okay. So you can send it. Let it send to you. Packet. Yeah. Yeah. We can do another topic while we get ready to record it. Okay. All right. Another topic while we get ready to record it. Um, yeah, if you want to send it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. How about seven? Center of your dance study. Clean water for him. This way he's Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. And then the Centerville Dam Study, the Clean Water Grant was approved forty-five thousand dollars with that money dedicated to a consultant who will do a dam safety, dam hazard study, which is required by agency natural resources, come up with alternatives such as repair, remove, replace, improve the habitat around there, stabilize it, deal with the beaver activity so that Mark doesn't get brand new beaver activity at the inlet which the existing dam actually serves as a detractor. So the beavers are using this half broken dam that y'all accept as a donation. Right. Uh, so just earlier this year, I think, uh, as their foundation. <laughs> so they never go 30 feet yeah. downstream to the inlet of a big culvert under center of it. So this question is related to the management of that grant, LCPC, uh, said they have bandwidth to do that. I originally had always envisioned it was going to be either the low kind of conservation with the regional planning or even the state kind of run project because it's really this state, state and clean water fund. And our interest was just having an answer for what do we do with this thing that we acquired. Uh, and that's what this $45,000 was for. Seth Jensen and I have been going back and forth. Uh, on the funding for LCPC services, which was not part of the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that is, let me just see if I get this right on there. Sorry. 
you can go back to the clean water funding strategy, just that amended up okay. to the process to go back to you know their three to six month prop they just clean okay. water fund operates this revolving yep. cycle of step one, step two, step, and then you get a meeting and a meeting and then you get an approval. So we could wait for that. Um we could authorize LCPC to do it and then seek an amendment. So we we commit to LCPC doing it, but at the same time ask for an amendment so that right. they're working and then right. we, we ask for the money back later. That's another option. Um looking for sets. I'm gonna say, yeah, what what do they need? Estimated the I think it's hold on one second. Not saying, but I think it's I think it's a percentage. I think it was, okay. I'm trying to remember that. I think it's like five thousand dollars. It wasn't more okay. than that. All right. So if you approved LCPC, we, I would make the amendment to go from forty-five to fifty. You let that go through the process, okay. and hopefully recover the five thousand. Right. At some okay. point when they approve it, we take the money from uh, uh, either stormwater reserves or just out of our regular operating engineering. Yeah. Money yeah. for now, why we from right. that? So that's the question. Uh, if it was a motion, it would be LCPC doing the uh, working with the state of Vermont's project, but crazy like that. Because we have we have no locals ability to do anything with that. Study it, propose any amendments. We don't really want to spend any town resources on it. The idea was that we get grants since it's a environmental improvement. And it's really not affecting the town highway system. Right. So it's, it's, it's a low priority for us, but a higher priority for the state. And if they want to pay for the whole thing, including the administrative, that sort of makes sense. Mm -hmm. We just we're out of sync with uh, the, the timing of this thing to keep it moving. So that was the idea. Um, approve up to 5,000 for LCPC for management services. We have a contract agreement for you guys to look back and sign when Seth can get it to us, right. make the applications in state to increase the town's 45,000, wait for that to come through. And then we'll have an answer. What do we do with this thing? Because that, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the now result got, of, the, right. of the study as well. What are your options? Right. Right. Uh, including a potential like historic mark, because that was an important center bill at some point. So that could be, the state always likes to sign their projects now. If they're investing in a project, they'll put up a little informational sign. And I'll say like this site is part of you know the uh, dam restoration project. It formerly was Centerville's uh, mill site from you know 1850 to 1910, 1910 or something. So there would be a little bit of a neighborhood recognition of it. Not a big piece, but that's kind of the why why are you doing anything? <laughs> Answer. So well, it was important to Centerville. If we're going to take it out. Maybe we should recognize that piece of history. Yeah. So no. People will know that it existed once, right? Yeah. Well, you guys said it is not bad. Yeah. yeah. I think do we do we we go ahead and get it going and have and then apply for the amendment to get the extra five thousand dollars from the from the state uh, instead so. of taking eight months to get the amendment from the state and then do the study. I'm pretty sure they're going to give us the money. So I would think so. Yeah. I'll make that motion to approve it five thousand. Second. Okay. Got it, Chastity? Yeah. You yeah. guys are really clear. Oh, good. I can hear I can hear everything really, really, really well. I think we figured out we need to get the mics closer to people and that and that helps. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah I could... Opening our candies. <laughs> um, all, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstain me? Okay. Now. Let's go. So, Chastity, did you get and can you pull up the job description things that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I have my email open already. Yeah. Okay. You got that. And um, did you put in? Uh, 
stuck in. Right. I was going to say, wait, did you put in our brilliant and? Okay. <laughs> okay. After, um, again, here's the, the, the job descriptions and how we have slowly but surely um, restructured what we're doing, realizing what jobs there are and what, what need to be done to keep the town running. Um, sort of what's what's left is the town administrator position. The, I call it the grant writer, but it sounds a lot more tech, better technically if you call it the community development specialist. And that's apparently what most communities now call their grant writer. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, clearing up with the, you know, a, a road commissioner and who that, who that is right? and what those, and what those responsibilities are. Um, I, I, I can't, I have, um, it's, it's interesting. One of one of the things that that you realize in as a small town, and as again as we've been working over the past couple of years, and here's how the town the job of a town administrator has has grown um, as as the world we deal with becomes more and more complex with more and more regulations. Um, you really do if you're going to keep your town going forward. Um, you really need somebody that can take the time to look for the extra money. A lot of the fun things and the, the good things that we've done in town, uh, which which even, and, and not necessarily the, the fun things, but somebody with the experience to the FEMA mitigation grants. I mean, that's, you know, that's not a small task and a new town administrator coming in, um, that, that may be part of what they take on, but if they don't, as again, I think several communities have found with new town administrators without any experience in that, they're overwhelmed with everything else they're trying to learn. And it's um, and it's harder and harder for small everything, you know, small businesses, I think small towns, small utilities um, to survive because the world is so much more complicated and complex. Um, I'm... You know, I, I think it's hard for select boards. I'll be I'll be careful what I say here, but I think we've seen in some communities if you have um if you don't have a really experienced town administrator and you've got a really new board, you can get into a lot of into a lot of misunderstanding with your community really fast, um, with all the with all the good intentions. So trying to you know, try, trying to split all this up and have it be a reasonable amount of work. Um, I, I sometimes feel, you know, feel like I come in and I, I've, uh, and um, actually Matt said several meetings ago, you know, we left, said he thinks as we're, as we are making this transition with, with Ron and with Steve and with everybody, you know, that there's going to be, um, it's different for the town. So there may be some, you know, we may hear more from folks <laughs> like about the speed limits. <laughs> um, and and how do we how do we deal with that? And how realistically the select board members, because I A, with the, it's wonderful having younger people on the board. It really is, because I think you, you know, you you represent what's coming in the community and those sorts of things. But it's also when you have full-time jobs and families. It's, it's 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 hard to have a lot of time to put into any volunteer organization that you know that that you do, um, and and it's just uh, I think being honest about how much we need are and that's why again with the with taking the road commissioner and 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 being able to you know Rowley's Rowley's got a great background in roads and those sorts of things but you're probably not going to stay on the select board forever. And so if we end up with someone that doesn't have much experience with that, you know, the, the liaison stuff just gets very, um, you know, what, what do you know? How do you deal with it? And I think to <clears throat> more formalize 
that the that the road commissioner is your I mean you know it, it needs to be Mark it's the person that's there every day that makes all the decisions they obviously have to have as as Mark and 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 you know they they've got a, a great working relationship and that's important but the decisions really you know I need to be coming from the person that's doing it every day it's not that there isn't that there isn't oversight. And you're not, you're not realistically, you're not going to set up and have a select board member that can do it. I mean, that's just, it's, it's not realistic. I mean, I really, I really don't. And I don't, and I can see Roland isn't going to agree with this at all, but that's, and that's perfectly okay. But, you know, the, the, the world has changed and looking towards the future and, and the positions that really work for five years from now, eight years from now when, well, you, you guys may still be doing, doing these jobs, but, <laughs> you know, but I, I doubt if Roland and I are going to be doing these jobs. You know, you have a new town administrator just thinking about the, what, what are realistic jobs and roles in the future and how, again, how things have, have changed. And, and it's a, you know, it's a hard conversation. And I'll let Roly, you know, or or e either of you, but I mean, I know Roly feels very differently about this than I conclude, which is perfectly okay. And that's you ought to you ought to ex explain why you feel the way we do because we're, you know, as we have been going through these changes for the town, we are making significant changes in town government. I don't think the road foreman should be. The highway. Um, I don't think it should be. Why not? The commission. I think you should have somebody out there that's a road foreman, and you should bring somebody in the field with the, with the road commissioner. I don't think. So that's going to have to be a paid position, right? I I I I would rather do that myself. Because I've seen this and it and it don't work. Not saying Mark ain't a nice guy. Mark. No, no, okay, as I say, I'm not looking at just, the, the personalities involved at all. Now it's a structure, right? Road commissioner should be out of the view, and you did have a road commissioner in this town that was on the select board for years. What's road commissioner? Yeah, but the world not saying control. that it should be now, right. but I'm also right. saying that you ought to think about this because the the, the, for, the world is has grown for me. Right, you're putting too much on that guy. Well, if you if you look at the if you look at the duties, okay, which you got there's the job description for that that we wrote up for the what the road commissioner would be. Road foreman is a road foreman working road foreman. Which that's what Mark is right now, correct? Right. Now you're going to put the commissioner on to him. It's all right. I don't know. We tried to, in the job description, define what you mean by that. And I, when I talked to Mark about it, he, says that he's doing the road commissioner work. He responds to complaints, which I don't know what a road commissioner does in people's minds other than respond to complaints, but he doesn't want somebody else dealing with complaints because he knows what is going on out in the roads to best respond to the complaint. So what what is your vision of what this added, what the added work is of road commissioner other than complaint processing? I guess. What what are those things that is just too much for Mark to handle? Because you are, and that's why we hired another man. So Mark would be out there too. But you're taking that road foreman that's supposed to be working away from his duties as a person is supposed to be getting work done too. See, I don't, if, 
Read, have you have you read the, the 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 job description? And that's what he's doing now. See, and that's why I'm not I'm not so go ahead and put it in the motion and I'll bet I'll vote the way no, I no, but I mean I'm not agreeing. I don't I don't wanna well I think part of the problem I think part of the problem we've always had just going back seven years now is People have a their own idea of what a road commissioner is. So we can never, until this first chance of right try to write, write it down, people have their own perception of what the road commissioner is. The only calls I've ever gotten while I've been here where somebody calls up and says, Where's that road commissioner? I have a complaint. That's that's the that's the phrase that I get. Who's the road commissioner? So I can complain about something. Or I can request a, a, a fix of a pothole, or I can, it's related to the road stuff, and they always go to Mark French. So the road commissioner, to me, at least in how we're, you know, what we're doing now, and I think maybe what you're trying to say is the road commissioner should be somebody that relieves some burden from the road form. So right now, Mark is taking complaints. He's doing some grant planning. He's up. Uh, he was up with the FEMA people today, with USDA, with me, looking at damage complaints. He wasn't working in the dirt. He was actually doing administrative stuff most of today. So he is doing those things now. If your vision of what a road commissioner does, I'm trying to understand your uh, position on this so it's clear, because other people will feel the same as you, is road commissioner title gets the complaints. If Roland Bovine or select board member or taxpayers running down the road and there's a problem with the road that they feel wasn't done the right way, they want to voice their complaint or concern or, or ask what the heck's going on, they want to call the road commissioner. You know, there's, there's certain title things that come with the road commissioner. That's one of them, is who do I call about highway stuff? The other issue is who's managing the crew, supervising the crew, telling the road foreman what to do every day and try to manage the big projects like how to, how to move salt, how to move sand, how to build a culvert, how to inspect a road, how to make the crown in the road, all those things that road foremen do every day. But I think what you're saying is a road commissioner is a separate person would be supervising that quality of work, let's call it. So those are the two things I, from what, what you've said in the past and what prior boards have said, is we need somebody, Dave Gagne is, is ringing in my head right now because he said some of these things. We need one person to take the complaints and get the answers for people. We need one person to supervise the crew and set their weekly schedule so that's effective. And we want one person to report to the full select board about how the whole operations of highway are going. So and, kind of and, three, those kind of three pieces would be a road. And commissioner. I don't think you need a road commissioner for forty hours a week. Well, but what is what are what are the jobs that you think the road commissioner should be doing? That's what, those three things. That's what, what he just said. Yeah, those three things are what I've heard in, up in the past, and what right. this one person would do. And, and Mark is doing those things. Well, and, and we we've done some triaging. So some road commissioners will issue all the driveway permits. The town administrator does that. That's one example, you know, sharing that administrative burden. Um, right now, Mark and I tend to work together on grants. Sometimes he takes the field work while I do the paperwork, and sometimes we develop the grant project ourselves. Sometimes a road commission would do 100% of that and say, oh, I got this grant. It's due by September 30th, and direct the foreman and the crew to finish that project by the 30th, which is what the, what the commissioner funded, let's say. Uh, and the complaints right now all go to Mark, which does take away from the state, like you're saying. He, sometimes he gets caught up with a neighbor or a driveway or a road problem for two or three hours. That takes him away from the screw who's trying to put culverts. And maybe the road commissioner would be doing that stuff. But Mark said more than once to me, yeah, right. I'm going to know why that thing isn't working right, or I'm going to know when it's fixed, or I'm going to know when my schedule allows me to get there so I can tell that person what the answer is. The road commissioner would just get in the way of that because they, they're going to have to either work really close with Mark day to day or call Mark anyway to then and run through the whole thing. Yeah, and, and, right. So that, that's how that works right now. He prefers to take that complaint directly. And we've talked about this at the board before where 
you know, if you guys hear something, get a refund market reps that can deal with it. And that's what the select board has said to do in the past year or so. So I, I hear what Roland's saying about the position. There's a role of the town administrator in that. And in that job description you have there, there is an increased role for reporting to the select board, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a memo or come to meetings. So that's one piece a road commissioner would normally do that you're going to ask um, that job to do is come to you more often and have either summary reports or actually in in person communication. Some of your meetings actually work a lot smoother when Mark's here on a sensitive topic. Right. Right. So this is sort of requiring him to be more engaged with you under that job description if, if Mark is is put in that pulling that stuff out and creating a uh, let's say a 10 hour um, road commissioner person. I, I haven't thought about a limited hour for that you know that's a different um, Concept that this is going to create duplication a little bit with what Mark's doing or what the you know, and so when all the complaints are there, so they yeah. be handling it anyway, right? Yeah, so the first is going to have to go to Mark and figure it out and then get back. And then the scheduling and oversight, some boards take a heavy hand in scheduling and oversight and they'll order the crew to do something. And that's you guys did that a little bit with the with winter stand. Right. <laughs> you took a vote motion at the board meeting to direct the crew to do something. That's sort of the in-between world of you don't have a commissioner doing it, but you have a select board directive doing it. Um, that usually doesn't work out too well, but that is an avenue some boards take. They actually will do that every couple of weeks they get a work plan from the highway crew to approve or the road crew doesn't do it. And that's a little bit that's a little bit different than what this is. And once you step that title up to the road foreman that puts a lot more stress on it. And I know he's doing it now, but he don't have the title. But once you put that title onto his shoulders, then you're gonna see somebody get burned out a lot quicker. I know, been there. Right, and that's the sort of, and, and again, we know, and and I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanna vote on something like this without all five members being here and having, this is gonna be where I have several conversations about it, you know? Um, but it's as much it's the it's the seeing this if you will the splitting up of the of the job duties and and what's happening and I, and I would go just because he's already doing that we don't have to change the title you know but it's just knowing that we're not if if people again when a, when when a select board member or you know or town administrator or the or anybody in the office gets a call and says who's the road commissioner we just say let me have you talk to Mark which is Again, basically what happens now because it is they're, they're calling with complaints. Right. And then there's well, what Roland's saying is that there still should be somebody directing I, 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 the foreman. I understand that. And that is either going to be the town ministry, road commissioner, select board, or whatever. So that's where we're trying to divide those right. duties. So Mark knows who he's, you know, under, so to speak. And the town people know who to go to when there's an issue. Right. Right. Do you all want to get calls? Do you want the road commission to get called? Do you want the road foreman to get called? Do you want the town administrator to get the call? The taxpayer should have one that happened. Right. For road but it went away. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. What was that? I think Allie had a question. Was it Allie? Yeah. yeah. She said, should the commissioner position be put out to go on by the townspeople? What's, what's that? Should the road commissioner position be put out to vote on by the townspeople? I don't. It hasn't been in the past, has it? No, I think that would be a that would be a very difficult thing to educate. We haven't had a road commissioner since Ken Harvey. Right. Was he voted? No. Is it? I don't, okay. I don't know that answer. Is it currently an appointed position, or well, how does that? You know, right. like what yes. themselves. Every March, right? Well, we can and we can get we can get answers to that and talk about it again at the next select board meeting. Hopefully, well, we'll get somebody. Yeah, here. Mark should be involved in this discussion too. Right. We're just trying right. to get we're trying to get the wording down on paper so people can really get to an answer somehow. Right? Has this been discussed at all with Mark or? Uh, not in this, not in a review of a job description. No, just kind of, gotcha. you know, the yeah, fact that what the job is right. he gets the same questions as I do. You know, who's the road? Sure. 
most towns have a road commissioner, one person that you call to, and they decide if the crew goes out to fix a mm -hmm. road or not. You know, they're they're doing that every day, which is what Mark does every day. So I, the other things that Roland's talking about are really management issues, mm -hmm. either supervision or project planning, ordering a crew, efficiency, those kind of things. Yeah. Well, I would I would think some of it has to do with the size of the town. I mean, if you're Morristown and you've got how 14, 15 people on a crew is a very different situation than having a working foreman, road commissioner, or whatever, whatever you want to be. When you got 14 people, more people, you know, working is a very uh, different amount of management, all sorts of things that you need to do. And you can see somebody needs to be um, in doing the scheduling and all that sort of thing if you also have a working foreman on the job. Look where we grew with Susan in the last 10 years. Ron did everything, you know? Right. So you're going to put somebody in there in 10 years, he's going to have his hands full. I'm telling you, he's going to have his hands full. Might be great for the first year or two. Well, but well, I was just going to say, it could be a temporary, you know, a, a year trial basis or something. We could put something in writing for that. Well, again, because that's the growing, and, and you for a couple of years have supported, you know, getting that fifth person for it. As things grow, jobs change. And you say, okay, we're at, a, we're at a point, again, as Morristown is looking at, they need, they really look at need to going from a town administrator to a town manager, you know? So we need to go from, you reach a point, you raised X amount of money, then okay, yeah, we need to in three or four years, who knows? You know, we need to hire somebody to do to, to ease up some of the some of the stuff that's that's on Mark. Um, but it's just sort of where I mean where we are now, we've just gotten them the fifth person. Um sorry, I, I yeah, and let's maybe next time have and and talk with Mark about it. We'll see. Hopefully, we'll all be here and talk about it some more because we. I think it. the other thing that Roland's hitting on is the select board's role in highway generally. So that's the other thing that I think I'm just trying to again keep your concern on the table, which is in the select board is not happy with something that's happening at highway. How do you deal with that? And do you you know this is not an answer. This is more of a right. question. How would how do you see the town dealing with that? You, Savannah, you're like driving down the road, and you're just like, that they said that culvert was going to be completed four weeks ago, and you want to, you don't want to wait for the select board meeting. But do you do you call me? Yeah, I call the town. You know, or do you feel like, oh no, this we the road commissioner is in charge. You know, that's another way that the select board members would do it. You know, you get a complaint from a resident. Who do you call? A lot of places, a lot of smaller towns in particular. You call the road commissioner. That's the person you call. But sort of in those towns, who is the road commissioner? A lot of times the select board and, and or select board chair sometimes. Right. Yeah, select board chair. Well, I can guarantee you I'm not doing that. <laughs> I think I, think I know that's a big smaller town. <laughs> and, and a lot of your towns don't even have them. Yeah, they've turned they've turned them into superintendents or road foreman or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. So All right. But there's and then that and the next step is that the town manager or yeah, town manager, in any in any, in any event they have more power than the select board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, well, they, they power of the purse is a highway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they do. Well, yeah, right, right. They, they, well, stuff, they, they, they well, spend all the money they want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so that's kind of, that's kind of the risk of so a kind of defined road commissioner is kind of one of the things you want to think. Of. Having a million dollar budget at your fingertips and not using it the right way. Right. Does the road commissioner just have access or responsibility, whatever, over the road funds? You mean? Yeah. 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 You still have a department money. Yeah. But you know, one of the things they can't spend. Without there's a and the select board always is supervisor of the commissioner. So there's always that direct. Right. So it's a collective usually working together. And sometimes the select board chair or vice chair will be the commissioner because they all work together with the highway crew. In in a town like Hyde Park, you're in that transition. You're coming from a small crew, right. a little bigger crew, but you're not quite big enough to get the superintendent type level. We don't have the water sewer stuff. Johnson switched to public works, for example. So they have a public works person now. They don't have a highway. 
anymore. You know, they're they're high. They didn't go to public works. Yeah, they, they, when they do that, I don't know. The trucks is public works on it now. Really, they, they got rid of highway, and now the huh. road okay. foreman is like the director of public works, and he spent a lot of administrative time, like Roland said. Working with me right, because he's right. On the yeah, stuff, but he's but right. He's doing all the other stuff. Yeah, he's organizing. Right. He runs back for you know from time to time, but he's doing. But once you, once you take and put Mark in that position, I know his level is going to go higher. And when you have an event like you just had, if you have a commissioner, he can come into big effect on that for him. So he can do his well, but see, that's where the town administrator comes. I was just going to say that. Yeah, we'll have a ton. Of, can I? Whoops, sorry. Yeah, can no, I no. ask a question? Before Mark, it was Ken, right? Pardon? Before Mark, it yeah. was Ken, right? Yes. Okay. Was his position similar, or what? What was his position? I'm just here. I'm just wondering. He like, was in the past. And then he was the road commissioner, and him and Kenny would talk every morning. Wait, you talk about Kenny Alexander or yeah. Ken Harvey? Kenny, no, not not Ken Harvey. Sorry, the person that worked before Mark that was Kenny, right? Ken that was Ken. Thank you. Yep. Ken so, Harvey. Ken Harvey was the road commissioner. When Kenny was the foreman. Right. Got it. Okay. And he called the shots. Up. Ken Harvey? Yeah. Got it. And okay. Ken just Sorry, I'm just trying to get some background. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Ken Harvey was the road commissioner and select board chair, and yeah. Ken Alexander was the road foreman? Yeah. Okay. So now Mark does all of the calling the shots pretty much on his own every day, which does increase yeah. the stress level because he's worried about all the mileage in town. Plus he's dealing with the complaints. So, you know, there is a certain amount of responsibility. He may look at this thing and say, I don't want that job. I don't know. We have to have a conversation. Right, right. With him. But uh, you well, know, one of those one of those things I can give him a little advice. <laughs> well don't well don't forget that there's really there are tasks. So the tasks at hand that we're talking about the complaints, the order and the crew, the efficiency question, grants, 11-11 permits, all those things can be broken up a little bit, you know, between either contractor L, town administrator, uh, road foreman. And then if you had this other position called road commissioner, 10 hours a week for discussion purposes, they should have a list of things that they're doing. So there's no overlap with the other right. people. Right. What do they do? You know, if you had a list of top three things that a road commissioner would do, what would they be? Okay, we're going to table it for next time, right? Yeah. And, like anyway, right, right, right. Well, we need to again. As I say, just need to talk to Mark, and we'll just right, needs to be. I'm sure there'll be several more conversations about this. Let's go to the easy one: town administrator. <laughs> okay. Everybody's looked at that. More importantly, how do you like the? Uh, Brilliant ad that we wrote. <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you roll for that? Mm -hmm. What'd you say? The, uh, the, the ad. It's on um, the first page. Yeah, I know it. But... Page. Go back to What does DOQ mean? Depends upon qualification. Yeah. Did everybody feel free to rewrite? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like a specialized job. So the part was with education, bachelor's degree, and relevant discipline. I 
I agree with that, but I've seen people that have been in some position for a long time. So a lot of positions will say, or or equivalent something yeah. to that. Yeah. We put a line there that says like, yeah, I agree, or like equivalent experience or okay. something to that effect. Yeah, Try to have a yeah, that is really good. good. Just so it doesn't scare people away that may not have a degree. Is that what you're thinking, Savannah? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I like everything else. But... That we, we did in the end with uh, <clears throat> the business administration or any fields are preferred, but candidates with comparable yep. experience are encouraged to apply. Yep. So we did get perfect. It. Okay. We got it in the end. Okay. We need to get it in the yep. in the there. Right. Uh, yeah. Maybe that. When we sit down, something. Oh, okay. Is this something we want to go on tonight, or are you waiting for more? I I don't. I mean. Mark is the one who what are we advertising? What are we advertising? So I just thought, and and again, looking at this. Commissioner or for the no, no, not the commissioner. I well, we should all, but for the town administrator. She meant Matt. So I mean. the, hmm? you meant Matt, not Mark. You said Matt. Okay, oh, sorry. Because right. right. okay. yeah. <laughs> I said we need to talk to Mark too. <laughs> um, but in terms of looking at this, if you guys want to be for the next meeting, play with the with the ad and come up with something again I, was it Waitsfield or Warren yeah, Ron who did the you know their advertising was you're looking for a superhero <laughs> <laughs> no, you know right. so it, you know it, it was uh, thinking something there's so many administrative positions being advertised for you know that's something that sort of you know yeah. can catch people at the you know at, at the beginning but if you just want to look at this and play rewriting it and then it so next, um, at the meeting at the end of the month that we vote on it, and, and again, I, I think, I think the job description with that addition is sort of pretty much sums it up. Um, we one of one of the things we're going to put in that anybody that comes in, you know, is the letter that we sent to everybody about how we've been restructuring and working on this and the different positions we've created. That I think. Um, anybody that's interested when they read that will tell them a lot about Hyde Park and what we're doing, what we're, we're trying to do, and great jobs and have a balance. Um, and then and then be ready to, to vote on the ad and start running it in October. Perfect. Yeah. You want to run the ad in October or try to hire someone in? No, I oh, need October. to run the ad. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, I can't hire somebody until I run the ad. Okay, October. I got you. <laughs> I Unless October somebody November. might walk through that. <laughs> October, November, December, both, you know, whatever. We're going to be buried in such high quality applications. But... Okay. Does that work for this? Work for you, Chas? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, boy. Let's go to speed limits on Battle Row and the other roads that we've had conversations about. No pay attention to the signs. <laughs> and no one else does either. So that's what I'm saying. I was on I was on Battle Road over the weekend. And I looked down. Oh no. There's <laughs> one on the bottom of America Road on the Morrisville side. I said I didn't realize I've lived there almost 20 years. I didn't realize it. it's getting almost 35. Well, and it, it's what's it's the the 25 is actually because that's in a village. And we have Tried to work constructively with the village, and um, and so when they wanted it, we said, "Okay, forget it." I'm I'm thinking and have talked with a, and this is where Ron jumped in with us that 
that we should just take all of those roads and you know then go all over the place and just do 40 miles an hour. That seems to fit in with studies that have been done and what the average you need to do it and do them all at 40. Yeah. And Rowan know. doesn't pay any attention. There so make a difference. Some people are going for you and Garfield, right? Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Up through yeah. them S turns and above the Terry's and Deanna's there. Yeah. Yeah, that's about 35 up there. Yeah. Around them S turns. So, so yeah, paying attention, attention at Garfield Road, for sure. Coming down Tromley Hill. Hill's another one. So, Ron, what do we have to do with our traffic ordinances if we wanted to get to making life simple and have it basically all be 40, except, of course, in the villages? But I just have a list of all the roads that right. are not in the ordinance yet. So you have two, you have a list of regulated, properly adopted speed limits on 60% of your roads. But ones that aren't, you could do, you have two options. You can do the traffic engineering study and come up with a number like 40 or whatever. Go through the ordinance process, wait for the appeal to get done and post your signs and then it's enforceable. The other option, which is not recommended, but still legal as far as I know, but make your list 40 mile per hour, beginning and end points, put up the signs and wait five years for enforcement. Like a default mechanism if you don't do the study. Well, what would you do with Centerville? Centerville's 45 right now and 25 in the village. So in that kind of situation, you're still talking about how to treat the village streets a little bit. I mean, not by Eric Williams. Yeah. Well, the whole stretch is there's different parts of Centerville. You got the gravel that we got to replace. Because which we call it a bump top there was a yes, you yeah, we had a 35 request for the gravel part of Centerville, which is 0.9 miles from Center Road down to Mead Road. That section there, um, right now it's 50. You could do that 35. The rest of the paved road in Centerville, so the rest curves are nasty getting up to North High Park Road, but you can still post it 40, and then you have your caution signs on top of that and take that 40 off. The rest of it's 45 right now. So you have a 45 on Centerville Road paved, and then when you get to the village, it drops to 25. So would you keep the 40 going into, let's say, the new culvert area, and then change it to 30 to Route 15? 25 is kind of hard to do by the fire station. Yes, it is. Just open straight. Yeah, so right. maybe, maybe you do 30 there and then have a 40 transition at some point all the way up to North High Park Road. But we really have to do the study before we do anything. You have an option. You can do the study to make it legal right away, and where you could, For, which means legal, you could they can enforce it. Yeah, or but then people are going to be mad if you have signs up that are and, that are being enforced. They won't be enforced. They can't be enforced for the five years. Yeah, I don't. I think that's I personally. Know. So we take a little. We take a little. You have your list still. Then you do your studies to match those Sorry, road definitely. segments. Then you'd adopt it in sixty days later. Can we? Can mm -hmm. we? Down the 25 on Battle Row? You, well, you come up with it, you would still do the same thing. You're talking about what is the right no, but, post. If you take it down, it's the fault is 50. What's the rest of Battle Row now? 50. 50. Okay. Yeah, it's all default. It's not posted at all. The, only the beginning part in for Route 100 is in the ordinance of 25. I think. Because that was the old builder's road. Mm -hmm. The 25 being there is crazy. I mean, if anything, it makes people just pay absolutely no attention to the signs. Yeah, that's why you have, that's why you use the 85th percentile, which is the engineering part, which says 85% of your cars drive a certain speed by, by comfort. So you don't want to get too far away from the 85, otherwise you get right. problems of being posted way too high sometimes or way too low. Yeah. Your liability issue of changing signs, that's a different question about whether you can just do that without some thought process. So it's so always how recommended. How did the 25 get there? We just did it because it was the village. It has nothing to do with the speed people were driving. Yeah, the, the, the village adopted a blanket, all street right. 25. That's why they put that three-way stop sign there yeah. in the village. Oh, oh, at the courthouse? Yeah, because they wanted to slow traffic. 
Yeah, they 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 slow it down by signage, but not by practice because you can't post it that low <laughs> and get, yeah, right. get compliance. Right. You're so, supposed to do the traffic study to figure out where that's you know reasonable drivers are driving and I'm, safely, obviously. I'm looking if there's a reasonable way for us to remove the 20 the 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 25 that's on battle road that has nothing to do with any speed that anybody ever drives there. It's a historic sign. If you're amending your ordinance, which is what you're talking about, because you have an in-place enforceable ordinance of 25. So is it, but has the 25 been there forever? Yeah. Why, yeah. Are people, why are people suddenly just screaming about it? Because it's like suddenly- Because they heard about. other people coming in. It's unposted. Yeah. yeah. It's unposted all the way back. It was 0.7 miles yeah. before the ordinance started. And it never had a 25 at that end. I think it, had, it might have had something right. Did it have something right off road number? Because you're getting all these new people in too. None of the people who are complaining are new. That's what's fascinating. I was going to I thought, I thought the number of times I've driven out there, I've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really know. I'll say that too. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. So we could, we, well, the, my best the answer would be to an expedited review of Battle Road. Okay. At the next meeting, you can change the ordinance for okay. the vote. Okay. It's still going to become set effective for 60 days, but we can do an expedited one. It's just the, so all these roads that you might want to add to this right. list. Right. We need to do the it, regular more, right. more time, but we can right. focus on that one if that's the high priority. You can take them sides down up there on Battle Road. Well, you. You well, wait for the next like, meeting and we'll expedite it and then we can take them down. Yeah, you, you could, but I think you have a, you raise your liability of, right. of okay. not. Of not doing it properly, I guess. You know, and I had it happen once on a stagecoach road. Yeah. We posted signs down at the bottom of the hill, 25 miles an hour, and then they got a guy who went 45. So they he went to court. Yeah. Somebody took the sign down before he went to court. And he and he said in court there was no sign. Oh. <laughs> so guess what? Yeah. He beat it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no sign. Yeah. Is on. Okay. And there was a thing there. But I would, it, it's a process. And okay. It's better, right. better for the town to stay in a process right. when you're messing right. with speed limits. Right. So, so let's with the other road. But your response to the people that are calling is we're working on we're it. Working. We're working. That's exactly what I thought I told them. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to prioritize one road, that's fine. But there are right. other roads that have requests pending that will. Right. That's, that speed limit's been up there for years. years. Yeah, I think that, that there was 125 right off of Route 100, but not the other end coming into the village. So it was missing half the fall. Right. Well, direction. When, when, when you come out the Senate Road, and so when you fork, um, it's 25 miles an hour going one direction, and it's 35 miles going the other direction. Off Senate Road. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's because there's a there is a yeah. 25 and 35 right there because that's a village line. Yeah. Yeah. And so, of course, which everybody is very aware of, since every all the traffic is coming that way now with, with the culvert. <laughs> this will be blue. I said, yeah, I am aware. Yeah, that's very yeah. short. Okay. All right, let's very get the process to do them uh, with these roads. Yeah. Um, has anybody reached out to the village regarding changing the Centerville Road? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, municipal planning grant resolution. Justin, yeah. Wow. Oh. The Planning Commission Chair, Bob Melbourne, signed last night for a municipal plan. I'm not too familiar with this topic. Ron will probably correct me. Okay. But um, Stowe, Hyde Park, and Cambridge, is that yeah. correct? We're working together for creating the municipal plan and updating that. Correct. And Hyde Park would be spearheading it. So it requires signature from a legislative body of either the select board or town administrator. Doesn't need select board set. The yep. whole select board? Yeah. Okay. Three, well, three or more. Three more. Okay. So, yeah, the whole select board. 
<laughs> Is there a way we can posit the chassis? <laughs> Yeah, this is like you do this every five years, eight. eight years, every eight years. And who leads it rotates through. Well, this is a little, thing. yeah, this is the, this is, we usually do a joint with the village of Hyde Park. I talked to Brian, the new uh, GM for the village today. They're still interested in having a joint comprehensive Hyde Park plan for eight years. And they would have their village components in there, water store, electric. Sidewalk yeah. maintenance, little kind of pieces of it. Uh, they may need to be part of that. I have to talk to Seth. Okay. So before the grant application goes in, which isn't due to November 1st, but we have to meet with all the boards, uh, this would basically put LCPC on staff to help uh, Steve work with the planning commission. Yeah. Well, and then we'll warrant sign as well. I'll do this. And we need a motion to sign that. Okay. I'll make a motion to sign that. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Um, 11. The interlocal assessor agreement. Is the final action on that? Yes. So this one. No. This is the one adding St. George that requires the Signature and authorization to sign a motion to sign the uh, into local motion. We need a motion. Yep. Um, that's the thing we talked about a couple of meetings ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. I'll Saint make your motion to the end, right? Yep. To what? Um, to join the yeah. answer agreement with Saint George. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody abstaining? Just so I mean, this has to be notarized. Not notarized, just witnessed. Okay. Uh, want to be witness? Okay. Okay. No. You had mentioned birth here now, or wait for that? Yeah, I mentioned it. think it's coming. Right. So okay. the town of Berkshire has also motioned and agreed to sign the joint integration agreement. Yep. So that hasn't we don't have a draft early for that yet, but they will be coming on for four hours a week starting in December. Possibly, hopefully, a little bit sooner, but as of December. So that'll put me up to twenty-four hours a week on average, and qualified through um, Johnson for retirement and prorated health insurance. Right, super. So you knew once it started, other people would want to join, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. we were right. So yeah. we did the same thing with the drug camera. <laughs> <laughs> I want to run your list of help. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah just, wanna... just so I make sure you got it. If you can check your text message. When I was working at Johnson on the um, debris removal yeah. stuff, we got, I have contact information from the Casella team that we work with. Gotcha. Okay. So you should have that in your. I just want to make sure you have it before I forget. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. I got it. No, that's great. So those two guys were helpful for Johnson when they were in needs. So we just we okay. could share their. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's great. Okay. So hey, just just to get people thinking about it. Yeah. Um. Let me see. We got. We we'll get through. We'll get through the town warrants. I think we need to go into executive session to talk about um actually we do see there are a couple of things we need to personnel things we need to talk about in executive session. Okay.
can you do the minutes? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I'll, if it's okay, I'll make a motion to approve the eight eight minutes. Eight eight minutes. Okay. Those are the yeah. Yeah. So you got the eight eight minutes. Good desk. I'm sorry. I mean. Um, I, I approve the eight eight minutes. We use. Did can somebody second them? Second. Oh, eight eight. That's the one I called in to on the road, right? Yeah. Then yes, I'll. Okay. Yep. Then I I'll second those. Okay. 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 Um. All in, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Who do we have? It? Yeah, we can't. We can't do that because we don't have enough of us here. I was gonna say, we have to abstain from last time, right? We're a little. Mm -hmm. Okay. This. Did they need to wait until the evaporation is created for a ripple year? Yeah, so it wouldn't do so it. Like, uh, yeah. like, no, I think we have to wait. That's an amended document. Yeah. Probably going to help us right now. Yeah. 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 It's on motion. Yeah, it's just an order of that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's two left. Yeah. 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 It's no, I don't think so. Get everything in Do we do number 10 village side lots? No, we're going to do exactly the trees would kill. No. Okay. Yeah. Computers are supposed to take care of that. You don't want it, huh? You don't. Okay. I was always gonna look at it. I don't. I don't. I can't tell you. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So I make motion to move into the secondary. Well, let's do the. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. I make motion to approve the. Um, uh, words. Words. Second. All in favor. Chastity. Yep. I think the favor of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. But you'd be amazed what we talk her into. She finds and reads the minutes to find out what she's agreed to. All no, I, I, I'm listening. Sing, <laughs> yeah, I looked at them online. I'm good. Signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, anybody abstaining? Okay. Yeah. Okay, now I make a motion. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Okay. 